welcome to the pre-show where Ali was having a unshake. Uh, I, I thought it was the other book. Sorry, a, a breakthrough. <laughs> Can you? Do you want to tell the audience why that's there? Because I. You ready for this? You ready to go nuts, as nuts as you have been about Miss Love Gone? I'm going to win you back. I am doing a four-day seminar with the man himself, Tony Robbins, about business, where I will be learning from the greats, such as the head of Nike, the head of Zappos, and the other great business tycoon of our times, Pitbull. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how you know you've made it right at this point tony robbins seminars are like scientology there's a minimum wage requirement what what do you what do you mean i don't know i just i had the impression that if you're going to one of tony robbins seminars it's equal to going to a ted talk you need to already be baller and when you go there yes, you, you will just be Way more baller because it'll just be a bunch of ballers coming in to make <laughs> one big ass bow, <laughs> and they all be bowling. <laughs> but let's not forget power bowling. The biggest bowler is still Tony Robbins. <laughs> it's like, is that amazing? He has pimped every successful person on earth. That is what that show is going to be. Uh, yes, uh, you're right because to get there, first you have to qualify. But they pretty much ask you, are you a prince of Dubai? No. Okay. Bitter nuts next year. Like they just, that, that, it, it is exactly what you're saying. They just pry into how successful your business is running. And they're kind of, with me, they were just like, mm, yeah, we need, we need to sell some nosebleeds. Go in. <laughs> <laughs> but that is it. Think about how successful that man is. You know how everyone has an audience? So if you go to a Neil Cole Hat Car show, it's mostly ethnics that are at uni. If you go to a Shooter Williams show, it's mostly druggos. If you go to my show, it's tradies and woke boomers. That's the, the audience. When and you go artists. to... to huh? And artists. Yeah, and art, yeah, they can come, I guess. I mean, uh, look, but they are the nosebleeds of my show. It's like, code, we've got you more tickets. You can come. Artist is a code word for another word that I'm not using from Bums. fear of... no. Let's just say it's very similar to, to artists. Artist. Yes, yeah, it is. And, and they sort of are an art piece of life. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, we've, we've, so it's his audience are the richest people on earth. He fills up an entire stadium of the most successful human beings on earth. Isn't that incredible? So I'm not even going to tell you how much it costs. You can guess in the comments, but let me just say, it hurt. Wow. No, I don't think I, I'm going to I'm spend that much on my girlfriend's wedding ring. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what it is? Every as the, the, Slowly as you move on the income ladder, let's say you're a person that is moving on the income ladder, with every little step you realize how really you're just touching the surface. <laughs> There's so many richer people out there. I remember when I was... I guess like at uni, I thought if I had, I'm not even kidding. I thought if I had a job that paid me $25 an hour, which is not that much higher than the minimum wage. No. I thought I'd be set. Yes. And when you get there, you're like, well, this is really, really not enough. <laughs> <laughs> like people aren't giving me like, uh, I don't know, loans because they're like, you're too poor. <laughs> so you, so, but, but you've got that horrible dilemma where, you're reaching a space where you thought was making it and then realizing, oh, shit, this is nowhere near making it. Yeah, well, that's, that's where you turn to Tony Robbins. You, this, is, this is the point where you turn to Tony Robbins' seminars. I know how his business model works. His business model works in that he gives you heaps of advice virtually for free in his books, or in my case, for free, because I know about Pirate Bay. And you learn all of that. You get to that stage... And then the next stage is you have to go to the seminar. Yeah. It is it is Scientology, but with... No, actually, it is just Scientology because <laughs> say what you will about Scientologists, they're fucking successful. They are. <laughs> well, you have to be successful. I wonder if they became successful because of Scientology. But you I do what? think that it is because, it's, dude, you see these... A lot of Scientologists say that. Even people that are no more in the church, 
acknowledge that Scientology is keeping aside all the fuck shit that comes with it, which everyone knows about, because, you know, we've all watched Joe Rogan. But it, it it does provide you with a really good framework on how to succeed in life. Yeah. And it's like constant therapy. Yeah. Like, it, it is insane how just talking to someone about your issues can give you so much clarity about yes. yourself. Yes. Because it's just swelling around in your mind. Yeah. So if you can get them out, and in their case, they can record it and then blackmail you with those thoughts later... <laughs> hey at least you're in the position to be blackmailed in the first place exactly. there's a lot of people in life where it's like i'm blackmailing you and for what my plasma from 2007 <laughs> <laughs> um I, let me look at the comments oh shit okay so all the comments are free miss love where's miss love um yes the tony robbins miss of love. this podcast or formally also i think people have noticed that because that was an impromptu way of cancelling. Because, look, we need to obviously do our decor again. But uh, Miss Love is Jesus. So I'm just going to stick to what we were talking about because what's the point of going into yeah, that? Yeah, we're not, we're not talking about that anymore. We <laughs> gave you all the explanation you need. He's not here. Deal with it. Yeah, look, it is it is what it is. Yeah. Um. But, and okay. Let me just say, even though he's not here to defend himself, it was entirely his fault. But go on. <laughs> I, I now agree because you don't even know half of the story. Um, so what I was saying was, yeah, just before we started recording, I was talking to you about how Jordan Peterson's 15 second clip completely changed my life. And now I'm on. Was it one of those ones that's on TikTok (laughs) that has the caption at the top saying, this will change your life? It did not, but it should have. Okay. (laughs) Because it did. I, I kid you not. It was 15 seconds. The entire clip was this. It was like he was piercing into my soul and talking to me specifically. <laughs> and it really, it really... Uh, so well, every male in their 20s has had that feeling. <laughs> Unless, of course, they're part of Vorsch's audience. So what, 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 he, was, what he said was um, his daughter, Michaela Peterson, asked... Um, That's uh, the only reason you clicked on, wasn't <laughs> it? Maybe, maybe. But I was in for a surprise. So she said, uh, um, dad or whatever the hell she calls him, um, pip, pip. what's your advice for a male in their 20s? Mm. And I was like, oh, here we go again. And then Jordan Peterson just says, um, I know right now you're thinking that responsibility will shackle you. You're thinking, I need to be free in order to achieve things that I want. I need to be free, shackle free. But I can tell you, happiness is not being shackle-free. Happiness is commitment. When you you have a family, when you've got a girlfriend, when you've got someone that expects things of you, that's what true happiness is. You really need to understand that. You will be a... There is nothing more uh, fulfilling than a relationship that's fruitful. You need to work towards that. Stop trying to chase after this mythical success. That would have pierced through your soul. Dude, it was like, are you fucking talking to me? (laughs) It was insane. (laughs) It really restructured how I... Because then I started thinking, you know what's recently made me happy? Getting a dog. And dog means commitment. Mm. I have to take my dog out for uh, for walks every day. Mm. I have to give it food. It just takes shit from me. No, it doesn't just take shit. It, It sometimes cuddles, but like... No, but... Taking it out on walks gives you exercise. Well, no, no. Going through a routine throughout the day puts structure into your day. Those are, but that's not even. That's all true, and that's what I thought before I was getting a dog. But the greatest, the the most fulfilling feeling for me was not that. It was there is something that is really dependent on me. I need to be able to be in a position to provide for this. That weirdly, I never thought that would be the case. But it weirdly gave me happiness. Mm. And now I'm now so... Anyways, we were talking about some of the things that I'm planning on doing. And also, what I need from you now is one of the things that I promised myself after this. You're going to laugh at it, but I need your logins for the masterclass thing because I don't want to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> I need to watch one of those because this isn't like a, a, a career... What, the one about the... CEO from Disney, I'll tell you what no, his secrets to success are. None of that. Buy Pixar. I've saved you <laughs> twelve hours. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't because if I tell you what I actually really want, you'd be way more disappointed. I want to watch Judd Apatow's How to Write a Joke. 
Uh, why? Because one of the things, this is not a career. Like I've spoken to you about like some of the career things that I'm doing, but like this isn't a career thing. This is just one of those things, you know, you know, the self-help thing, write down things that you really want to do. And one of the things that I really wanted to do, not professionally, just for my own happiness, was write a stand-up show. What the hell? So What is this bucket list? This is a bucket list. You're not 80. You're not going to die. I know, I know. It's not a bucket list, but it's something that... um. It's pretty bucket listy. That's up there. For someone like you to say that, it's kind of like, I want to skydive. I uh, want to shake Meryl Streep's hand. <laughs> it, it's... it's <laughs> Like, look, I was talking to you about this before, and this is a bit, this is a bit personal. But one of the things that I, um, when I was, when I was like about to enter my twenties, I was nineteen years old. I saw very much like this a clip of uh, even worse. I swear I watch better shit and read better things. But like Jack Ma, <laughs> the Chinese billionaire, he had a talk. And he said, he struck <laughs> yeah, but Yes, you do consume media that's better than that. But you also still consume that kind of media. Uh, I do still consume that kind of media. And weirdly, that has more impact on me than all the other shit. Yeah. Well. So the, what Jack Ma was saying, as a 19-year-old, I was watching it. And I, um, I st- till this day, I'm following it. He said, when you're from, from like 0 to 20, you study and you're not really much in control. But once you hit your 20s... It doesn't matter what you're doing. Keep stabbing in the dark. Be risky. Try different things. As many different things as possible. Don't worry about where it's leading you. As long as you're having fun, you should keep doing it. Podcast kind of situation, you know, where you're just... Because when we started the podcast, there was no even prospect of making money from it. I didn't even... I never even thought that we would eventually make money from it. But it was just something that... And, and that Jack Ma thing, yeah, keep stabbing in the dark. That opportunity came. You said you want to do the podcast. Never even thought of doing media, but I was like, you know what? Yeah, it interests me. I'm going to do it. His thing was by when you by the time you finish your 20s, when you hit your 30s, you realize you you need to realize at that point what you want to do. And then you chase after it like a sprint. No more stabbing in the dark. You set yourself a goal and you run towards it. Said when you're in your 40s, Hopefully by that point, you have conquered that goal that you were trying to do, or at least have come close to it. In your 40s, what you do is now you uh, detangle yourself. You give that off to the younger generation. They'll be, they'll, they'll be able to do it much better than you. They have newer ideas. You need to be able to be in a position where you're effectively handing on the baton to them and training them with skills that would help them in the future. You're saying you'd consistently do that in your 40s and your 50s, Fuck this bullshit retirement. Just retire. That's when you... And when you retire, it doesn't mean like you just sit by yourself. You said then you again, in in, in a way, you become a kid and you start... You can do whatever you want. You've got enough money that secures your family. You've got enough money for yourself. You can just be... And, you know, if you like hanging out in the Cayman Islands, do that. If you want to be like Murdoch and work till you're 100 years old, do that. But at that point, it's there's, there's no specific goals that you're chasing. You're just doing what you like. You know what, he's taking the... I think it's a quote from Confucius. That's Chinese as fuck. Where he was saying that in your 20s... No, it's... If you're not if you're not handsome by 20, not strong by 30, not rich by 40, you will never be handsome, strong and rich. <laughs> I guess so. That's what he's saying, right? But I think... I weirdly think that's that's accurate. Yeah, he's right. I mean, it's not that you can't. You have plenty of examples of people, you know, that were um, nothing until their 50s and became... The biggest... I I, I remember talking about this on the pod, but Harry Truman, the President Truman story is insane. Yeah, but Harry Truman really is the mislove of presidents. (laughs) 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 So slack, he's not here. Yeah, yeah, he's not here. (laughs) And he never will be. Yeah, so we've got to stop talking about it. But um, so but there are plenty of examples, but it, it becomes harder. Let's just say. So anyway, so I was always under the impression that um, in my twenties, yeah, I'll do whatever I want, and by thirty, I'll figure out what I really want. I'm twenty nine years old, so I'm about to turn thirty, and so I tried everything. Right, I did this. I did like all the stuff with you. Um, I st- I started law school. I'm about to finish law school, so I'm about to even f- do that. End up finishing that goal because I thought, look, law. 
Give it this a go. It's interesting. Give it a go. I'm in my 20s. Do crazy shit, right? Crazy, crazy shit. shit. Um, <laughs> then I started, I don't know, like, if a lot of people know this, but, like, your merchandise stuff. So I started, like, that thing where um, that business of, you know, the shirt, like, for example, friendlygeorgies.com, buy merchandise. You know what's funny? I personally pack it for you. <laughs> um, and now, so, I'm, but, but what I did realize in my 20s is, I didn't. I wasn't able to do what Jack Ma said. That you figure out that one thing that you really want to do, and then you chase after it. But what I figured out was that uh, I don't want to do one thing. That's no fun. I'm happiest. I remember when I was like running that. Uh, I was uh, helping my parents run the restaurant. I was doing that Dan Murphy's job. I was doing the podcast. And I was at law school. My life was insane. I would probably get like four or five hours of sleep to the point where like I at one point got hospitalized and my doctor told me that the reason why you're sick is because you're working too much. Mm. Your immune system is weak because mm. you're not giving it any rest. Mm. He straight up told me that. And, and obviously I did change things after that, but it was the happiest I've ever been. And the happiest in the sense that like, I'm doing so many things. Like it, it's just fun. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And yeah, like, you know, and you're young, so you're like, fuck it. Like, I've got the stamina. And I still want to be able to do that. And the way I am sort of coming to terms with it is, again, another self-help thing. Elon Musk's approach towards working. He, I, I think I'm instinctively good at it. And, but I just sort of, he verbalized it for me. He said that hey, when he's asked, how do you manage to do so many things? You've got SpaceX, Tesla, and, you know, I'm doing like bullshit, small scale stuff. He's doing large scale stuff so he gets how do you manage to do it and he says that you don't need what you need is whenever you're working on something to forget about everything else give yourself five minutes he says you don't even need more than five minutes let's say you've got some kind of business it's run with i don't know some supply chain issue whatever the thing may be you you find out what that is and you spend five minutes thinking really hard about that ignore everything else in your life nothing matters at that point all that consumes you is that one problem you do that for five minutes it's going to be half an hour to an hour of a normal day stuff because you're preoccupied with so many things and you just got like a routine thing forget about everything focus on that for a little while and you will be able to understand a quick fix you do that and then you move on you forget about that ever existed i kind of do that a little bit right now on a much smaller, smaller scale. Like, for example, I'd be, let's say today, right? Um, um, the stick sent me the brief for today's podcast. So I went through the brief. I looked up all the articles that I was saying. I read them. And for that 15 minutes, 20 minutes or whatever, I was doing exclusively that. I changed that. Then I moved on to what new orders I got for uh, from the Friendly Geordie's merch stuff. I compiled that, put it into Australia Post, started doing that and move on. And then you, and then I was like, okay, now I have to come here to the podcast or I have to edit, whatever it is. There's multiple things. And I, that's something I enjoy. And so now that I'm entering my 30s. Wait, what do you enjoy? Doing multiple things at the same time. Okay, yeah. I don't want to be like a nine to five guy that says, okay, your job is being the logistics manager. Well, who does? Yeah. Well, I'm not saying that, uh, weirdly, I don't even have a problem with that. I would be willing to do that as long as that's the one, one of the things that I'm doing. So even though like, with this law stuff, I do plan on working at some kind of work related to this because I want to understand how that works. But the last thing I would ever want is for that to be my life. Like, you are now a lawyer. Like, that is annoying to me. I remember when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. I, re I remember when I was a kid, I was um, watching uh, this interview who was weirdly a uh, guy who my dad also knew, so I met him. He wrote the Constitution for, for Pakistan. One of those genius, crazy people. Just... In, invented instruments, wrote the constitution, uh, was a top lawyer in the country, but also said that I hate law and I barely pay any attention to it anymore. Um, it, it came up with a new uh, uh, um, psychological theory called evolutionary mentology, which is being studied all. So he's one of those crazy geniuses, right? You know, 150, 160 IQ. And he was asked the question of like, how are you able to manage all of these different things and do them to the extent that you're able to do it. And he was like, well, first of all, you give up your social life. That's one. You can't. If you want to be able to do that, you just need to forget about everything else. Um, you really, you really can't have any hobbies. You need to really focus on whatever work stuff you're doing. You have to make it into a hobby. You, your hobbies, 
you don't have time to like go play football. Basically, <laughs> you you what if 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 that's what you then you do that profession. That was his thing, and so at that point I used to think, well, that's a that's a very difficult way of life. But now, I'm not saying that I want to be him and I want to do it to like a genius level, but I want to be able to do a lot of different things. And so that's my new 30s ambition. Do what you did in your 20s, but with more money. Uh. Look, I don't want to reveal too much, but you know a little bit. But like making it mainstream, taking it to the next level. Well, basically, I'm thinking of like. But that's been your life fashion so far, time. though. Look, I was always productive, even in my twenties. But it was always like I said, stab in the dark a little bit. It was things work out, and if they don't wait, work what is it? Hang on, what is this got to do with stand up? Oh, stand up. Sorry. So stand up <laughs> was one of those. So that's from a different thing. So st- it has nothing to do with stand up. But Doesn't see, it? I always... Look, for me personally, I always have this thing of... I do not think anyone is a comedian unless you've done stand-up. You, even if you're a horrible stand-up, you'll be a bad comedian, but you can but only still call yourself a comedian if you do stand-up. Now, hence, I have never called myself a comedian, and neither do I want to be a comedian, but I've always been a huge fan of stand-up comedy... And I n- always knew it was the pure... And when I see you in action, it really is inspiring as well. I mean, you've always wanted to do that and you've worked so much for it. I, I, look, I know you've studied like 10 years before you even got your first two people just studying comedy. So I know what it takes, which is why I'm not saying that I want to be you. I don't want to be a stand-up professionally, someone that goes on tours. But I just want to do some stand-up so I can say, yeah, I've done some stand-up. So that's that's got nothing to do with career or profession. That's just a little bucket list. What are you aiming for? Nothing. An audience of 30? I'm aiming for a bunch of people. Uh, dude, even if I bomb. Because it still wouldn't matter. Wait, are you going to do a tour? No, I'm not going to do a tour. So you're just going to do one one-hour stand-up show? No, Spend a year not, writing I'm it? I'm not saying that I want to do a one one-hour stand-up show. I'm going to... Well, first of all, you write as much material and then you come up with like whatever type... And I don't want to say this in front of you because you're going to fucking hate me for it, but I might do an open mic thing. Why? You don't need to. Look at all these people. I know. You're doing an open mic now. I know, but I'm not doing first of all comedy. And secondly, I want to do it in the purest way. <laughs> It is the purest way, I'll give you that. Yeah. If these people show up to the stand-up, which I would not recommend because I am not a comedian, this is going to be like that. Uh, Wait, so this Tyson is just or what or everyone at your Dan Murphy's job did. You just want to do that. They, they, they went on to all those Surrey Hill shows where it's a bunch of hipster comedians that aren't trying, they're deliberately being catty towards you. And you want that as the audience? No. I no. think that you should just invite a bunch of these people to come to your stand-up show. Uh, that's no fun. Why? But Why is it no, not fun? What I'm saying that's is... That's uh, much more fun than the hipster stand-up route. <laughs> it is. I can tell you from experience. <laughs> but look, they. I know that everyone is being a stand-up, which is one of the things... Which is why I've never vocalized it, because I don't want to fall into that legion. But... Look, I think I can do it slightly better than them. And also, I've been to so many of those shitty stand-ups. Dude, they're horrible. I know I can do better than them. Uh, now, the question is, am I, st- am I going to be... Am I going to do a good stand-up? That still remains to be seen. But I do know I'll do better than most of these hipster open mic guys. Well, I'll tell you why you will do a lot better than them. Because you know this one piece of information that'll say... I'm really giving away tricks of the trade here, all right? But you understand one thing that those hipsters don't, which is... You have to talk about something that you actually care about. Whereas all these hipsters just see other hipsters on Netflix talking about, so porn is weird. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Are about white people? And so they do exactly what they see on Netflix. And the people that are on Netflix, the reason that they're crap at it as well all the time, I think, is because they don't actually care about what they're saying either. They have got in their heads, this is the way that you're supposed to do it. And so they just hit those subjects and then put their, you know, extremely witty slant on it, which, as we all know from experience, uh, everything that is in Netflix comedy should be subcategorized as horror. Uh, So, like... (laughs) (laughs) So you just coming up there and pretty much talking about the subjects that you would talk about on Holesworthy Live, you're already miles ahead of them. Yeah, and you know what? I think the other flaw that 
a lot of these hipster comedians, it's it's not even their fault. I think that a lot of these new, like these breaks, like you go up to like some venue and you say, hey, can you put me on Tuesday? They look at the wrong things. They're like, well, we're having a Thursday ladies stand up or we're having like, I don't know, ethnic stand up. So this guy would be a good fit for that or this lady would be a good fit for this and you know, all that shit. And that really fucks with the comedian because the comedian still doesn't know what's funny now because the comedian is... because. I'm guessing you go to a stand-up show in the 80s, right? The only thing that is going to get you a break is if you can make that person laugh who's giving you that job. Because that's what comedians do. Like, if you can make me laugh and I think you're funny, then the stage is all yours. But now it's not that, okay, you might be funny or you might not be funny, but we really need to have this sort of vibe going and this is an event. You, you, you go to, like, a lot of these open mics, like, these places that I go to... Um, it's all, I don't want to like go to, because, you know, we've, we've talked about this, but it's all for like bullshit reasons. They're, they're not there because the guy who gave them that spot thinks they're funny. The worst thing is the guy who's giving them the spot is also chosen for the wrong reasons a lot of the times. Yeah, of course. Look, I was talking about this a lot with Neil on the pod. Western comedy has been severely neutered as everything that makes you laugh you're now not allowed to say. And it's so apparent when there's this great... In fact, you should watch it if you're into this because I only recommend this to people that are comedians, but there is this show called Documental, which is... Remember that piece of shit show that kept getting advertised when we were back in the professional Twitch studio? Laugh on laughing. Oh, my God. It's the least funny thing on earth. Check it out. I did check it out. Suck balls. And then I watched the Japanese equivalent of it, which is what it was set up on. And it's amazing. And you know why? Because that society is not politically correct. <laughs> is that the entire reason? Like, I'll give you an example. I was talking about this on the podcast. but <laughs> So the whole game is that you're, if you laugh, you lose. And it's got another Japanese addition to it, which is instead of, you can win $100,000... You know that Simpsons thing where they say, in America, you reward knowledge. In Japan, we punish ignorance. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are doing that. The comedians, just to enter, have to put, I think, the equivalent of $10,000 on the table. And they're comedians that don't have $10,000. A lot of them have to borrow money from their family. One of them was saying, I went to the bank and asked for $10,000, and they said I didn't earn enough to get $10,000. <laughs> Dude, that's brutal. It's so brutal. <laughs> and so if they laugh, they lose the money. And it's Japan. I don't think it's a show. I think because they were really upset when they lost. <laughs> <laughs> but they're amazing. Just think about how unpolitically correct this is. They are coming up with all of these G... This, look, the thing that they understand about comedy that everyone in the West has forgotten is everyone goes, mm, highbrow comedy. First of all, the highbrow comedians that you're thinking about aren't even fucking highbrow. They're idiots. They're just like, they, they don't say anything funny. That's highbrow now. Uh, but what you notice with the Japanese comedians is... <laughs> Crack, sorry, cracking shit jokes is highbrow. Yeah, that, that's what it... You know what's so sad? That's not even a joke. That is... The beginning of observational humor. Just get rid of the humor part. It's an observation. It's an observation. <laughs> You're a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, in Japan, the comedians have a broad range of skills because they actually study it, and. So they're able to make extremely witty calls that a lot of them get lost in translation, but you can tell that they are good plays on words in Japan. Uh, they know about dark humour. They know about light and shade. They also know something that Australian comedians don't know, which is that, hey, here's a good way to make people laugh. Don't be a complete attention-hogging narcissist. Like, that's the thing that gets you up on stage, but that shouldn't be the thing that sustains your career. Yeah, 100%. You, you're supposed to grow out of that. And so they actually build scenarios together and they eventually become so ridiculous that a couple of them go, and then they've lost, right? They understand yeah. those bits. Then they've got all the highbrow bits, but then they also just do things like put a vacuum cleaner on their nuts. <laughs> That's awesome. 
And it's going to make you laugh. Yeah, yeah. It was one. <laughs> just to show you just how politically correct this is. There's a point. No one's, everyone's trying to stay stirred as possible. And then one of them goes, everybody look at this. And then puts a picture down. And it's a picture of someone who's clearly retarded. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's really bad and everything, but that man has figured out humor. Because he's the the he's observations, cheating, but he's he's figured it out. He hasn't cheated. The whole point premise of it's a free for all. It's if you can make him laugh, you win. Yeah, okay. But he's understood something that I think it was Plutarch. Might have been Aristotle actually. One of the Greek philosophers figured this out, which is this is the basis of humor. If someone is foreign, if someone is disfigured in some way, someone's ugly, pretty much if that person is different to the norms of society, that's going to produce a laugh. That's pretty much all of what that show is. There's a bunch of play on words, and the play on words are very good, but the things that always make people laugh is the nuts, is just, you know, coming out... Uh, like, like dressed as a priest and being like, nobody finds this funny. <sighs> and then taking it off. And then he's just got like a little elephant G string on, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> Dude, actually I saw just today. I was seeing Eddie Murphy make that exact point. Cause what? he's been uh, doing tours to promote coming to America too, which by the way I have seen and it is not as good as the first one. Nowhere. Well, close. yeah, the, the trailer didn't give that away, but it's still okay. It was a throwback oh. to the era of the nineties. It's, it's okay like for your, you. It's it, dude. It's it, it's like it's like watching a Chris Tucker stand up in two thousand and twenty, which it's not was great, awesome. No, but uh, uh, it's uh, like watching a period piece. So that's good. <laughs> You've sort of lost the analogy there because even though Chris Tucker's comedy is, is that, you're right. It's not comedy. It's a period piece. Yeah. <laughs> It still makes me laugh. It does, and make it's me laugh not too. even like it's it's not even a period piece to him in the Fifth Element. It's earlier than that. Yeah. It's <laughs> Def Jam days. But Eddie Murphy just today, I was watching him on uh, something, and he was saying he was asked uh, by some British dude from the BBC, "What do you do for fun? Yeah, like what's your what you what you doing all day?" And he's like, "I'm a, I'm I'm just watching. You know, what's that show? It's the it's the it's the most comedic show ever." It's where people get hit in the head. Like, uh, ridiculousness, that show, it, it's the greatest thing because it's a collage of all the funniest things that happen in the world. It's basically like jackass. Have you seen, do you know what show I'm talking about? It's like America's Funniest Home Videos. Mm. They just have shots of people falling down from a bicycle and hurting their nuts and then just a host going, oh, 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 all right, what's the next one? And so that's the entire show. And that's Eddie Murphy's favorite show. He's got good taste. But that's what I'm saying. He's got good taste because he's figured out maybe a Netflix special is going to be funny. It most likely won't be funny. This I know is funny. Mm, I agree. And it's new every time. It's not like you're watching the same movie and over again. It's like, well, you, you are, but like you're watching different people get hit on different sides of their nuts. Which is always the essence of it. In fact, that's what... The, you know what you notice about... the And I've always thought this as well when you're in the crowd... I don't think sexual jokes land as much as people think they land. I think sexual jokes most of the time make you feel squeamish. The only time sexual jokes work, I think, is in a radio environment because you have to just be really comfortable with the people that you're talking about sex with. Mm. If you are on stage and doing it, there's always just a bit of squeamishness and unease and that's the death of a stand-up show. As soon as people feel uneasy, they're gone. Uh... The things that you definitely notice from Yep Hen is genitals are funny, but not in a sexual way. But like censored. if you're paying it out, huh? But censored. Maybe it's because. Is that why a Japanese porno have censored nuts? Because everyone's going to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I figured it out. Because you are showing this penetration, so I'm <sighs> guessing you're not scared. Ed, yes, Ed. In the uncensored versions of Japanese porn, you do laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so you are right. That's, that's so mean. <laughs> but it's true. They, uh, yeah, it, it's that. And then, yeah, it's, it's the same things over and over again. 
paying out that someone's ugly, going to get a laugh. Saying something that's politically incorrect, you're going to get a laugh. Doing something violent, going to get a laugh. And the third and fi- the fourth instalment of that is, yeah, hurting yourself. Farting. Let's not forget that. There's some very good farts in that. <laughs> All right, but we- I think that's the thing. You know what's funny? Farting, talking about farting, I have rarely ever laughed at that. But someone actually farting. Yeah, yeah that's always funny. Like, you know, dude, I remember I Rodney remember- Rude had Rodney Rude knew how to do it because he just said. I remember once he was just like, all these cunts in the media always saying that oh, I'm not fucking highbrow. Well, to them I say, and then he just put a mic down. And <laughs> <laughs> one of the other funny fasts that I remember was actually from Dome King. Dome King during one period had realized that uh, his, his farts can be excusable if he makes a dumb sound after that. <laughs> so he used yes. to fart and he goes, mm. <laughs> every time. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow made it okay when he went mm. satisfaction. All right, let's yeah, well it was like I remember when he had to drive me the price of getting that man to drive me at 5 a.m. in the morning was half an ounce of weed. <laughs> And I gave him that. And obviously, he was just so fuzzy guy. But this is how fucked this man is. He gets up. He doesn't have a shirt on. He has a gut. Like a real 40-year-old gut. And he, he's just scratching his stomach, looking like really pleased with himself. <laughs> he gets out a can of V, downs it, and goes, Ugh. Bows. <laughs> 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 yeah, he did shit like that. Was like he made a burp funny. That's a comedian. <laughs> well, I, I do remember us having an extensive conversation at all of us sitting there uh, to, to go away with what I was just saying about sex not being funny. But I do think that we remember when we were just saying like, is this the funniest thing of all time? Someone doing exactly this and nothing else. You ready? <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> It is, it is. But look, let's let's start our official podcast. No ad break today because we're over time, but yeah, all right. welcome to the Friendly Jody's podcast. You are watching this podcast with absence of mislove because, um, look, I think you know what it is. So if you're going to comment some more, it, you, our last podcast got like way more comments and uh, most of the comments were about the same thing. But anyways, look. Let's There's a lot of things that we're not allowed to talk about. Look. Yeah, I'm that's like, what Sandy wrote. She just wrote, "I rang Jordan tonight and said, please don't talk about immature shit tonight." <laughs> <laughs> this is the funniest, sad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, let's start with the the main one, dude. Okay, I know you've done a video about this, and but we haven't gotten <clears throat> to speak. Which one? W A Lange. Ah, God Emperor McGowan. How did he do it? Is it just COVID or is there some other backstory that I'm not aware of? Yeah, it is just COVID, let's be honest. Really? Well, he wouldn't be winning by that much if he didn't shut the border, would he? Could you imagine if he did the exact opposite? If he did what the Liberals did, he'd have two seats right now. Sure. And, um, but, okay, what do you, have you looked at this? So I was looking at um, the legislative uh, seats, the legislative council seats. Do you know there's like a split even? And it's not because uh, uh, the Liberals won more um, votes. It's because the preference system in uh, WA is kind of fucked. They give like one to seven weightage to country votes. Yeah, that's right. And so basically what you're, what the, the map in uh, WA for legislative seats just looks equal parts uh, nationals, equal parts liberal, and equal parts labor, which really does not represent <laughs> the votes. Mm. What the fuck's that about? But it does represent land mass. Does it? No, it, it represents land Can you imagine a mass, national yeah. seat in WA? It'd be like twice the size of South Australia. One seat. Yeah, because if I'm not wrong, I think WA is the biggest territory in the world governed by one uh, premier or chief minister or whatever you want to call it. It is the yeah. biggest. Because there's so many half of Australia and Australia is huge. Yeah. So they're pretty much just governing China. 
Dude, he's without any people. Mark him. McGowan is Cengiz Khan. Mm. Like he he is. he, he cover <laughs> his his re- and he has become dictator Mark McGowan now. I read the latest Murdoch propaganda. The first thing they wrote about is how he's uh, reshuffled his cabinet like every premier does after an election. But they're saying this symbolizes that dictator is on the march to take over the country. Why does that symbolize that? Uh, they're what saying that saying? it's showing how it, the, the power has gotten to his head and what? he's dismissing people left, right, and center. That's their take. Well, their job is to find something negative about what is... It's, look, I don't, I don't want to be in their position. Usually, I really like the idea of sitting there and just being like, Mark McGowan's gown. And then just a <laughs> shot of him just like with a gown off, you know? Like, I, 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 usually, I really envy their jobs. Dude. Not at the moment. Not for the next two weeks. Dude, you know who I do not envy? The the guy who lost, the liberal opposition leader. His, the, the first thing that I saw was Peter Credlin's video on Sky News saying, we sent a boy to do a man's job. <laughs> that must really hurt. <laughs> guy now, that's a good insult. Losing in polls from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and he does look like a boy with a beard. Yeah. Uh, Accelerated aging. He was touted to be before the elections, but like two months ago, he was touted to be the next prime minister of Australia. What? Yeah. By some. How? How is McGowan? No, not him. Not touted. Oh, because he's Labour. I'm talking about the Murdoch media. <laughs> They're not going to. Yeah, look, I, I, I should know that, shouldn't I? Make an <laughs> entire career out of sitting there, be like, they're biased against Labour. <laughs> and but you educated me. Thank you, Arlo. Yeah, they are very biased against Labour. Did you know? Uh, <laughs> and uh, they're not big fans of Greens, but when it comes to Labour, they'll love them too. So yeah, some extra some extra knowledge. Yeah, they really didn't have it. You know what else is really really good about this? They will find it really hard to campaign in the next federal election because there's no Liberals left in WA. They've well, been decimated. They got the gender balance right. There's one man and one woman in the world. Is there? <laughs> 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 I really like how they're not even an official opposition now. Yeah, it's insane. It's God, what a boss state. Most isolated city on earth. Epic enough. Biggest land mass on earth governed. Boss it itself. What now there is <laughs> no opposite. Whoa. Oh, what's all this Whoa. then? Oh, 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 yeah, what? What's oh. all this? Hello? Let me say that you can't... Uh, that, 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 that's fine, it's fine. You guys keep going, it's all good. I'm just... Hey, we said that you can't that, come that, during the podcast. What's lying. going on? I, I, I was in the building and uh, I was just, just passing by. It's all, uh, it's, all, you know, it's all good. I thought you went home. No, no, I just came for the... Uh, can't live without chicken, basically. Uh, Dude, we're live right now. Really? They can see you. No. Just get off. Get, get Dude, can you, yeah. can you... Go on. Dude, why are you making it more hard for us? Um, wait. So you can see this? Yes. Oh, well, that's fine. You know how the podcast stream works. Well, what are you talking about? Just, talking can you put on a shirt and then about? get out? Hey, hey we're going to... Uh, let's, let's go on a what, break. What are you talking about? Are you talking about... <sighs> Hey, miss, you know what we're talking about. We've Is had it, this discussion. Look, well, can we can we just go, oh, well, sorry, we have to go on a quick break. We'll be back. I'll let you explain. Sorry no, we'll about just, that. Uh, shoot. Nah, we'll just pretend that didn't happen. Um Look, I had like a thing plan. Sorry. Well, what was it about? McGowan? Yeah, we were talking about McGowan. Yeah, sick. Well, Play um, on. Well, I was. I'm sorry. I'm I'm a little lost for words. I think I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm <laughs> it's thing. fine. Look, the thing is, yes, McGowan won because of COVID. That's definitely true. But he also won because he's handsome, and he also won. I think this is a big thing that is just underplayed. Kerry Stokes. He definitely is pro liberal, but he's willing to do business with the Labor Party. Hey. I have to check my TikTok anyway. 
What? what? I just have to. No, no, I just have to. I just have to check TikTok. Wait, hang on. Are we all right? No, let's no, just no, talk no, this out. Wait, are, are you want If you want to talk it out in front of everyone, then just fucking no, 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 come no, no, no. here. Look, I'm gonna sit. Look, you guys. No, no, come on, come on, come on. Let's Dude, just no talk one, this out. No like, we'll, we'll call this is the final one. But like, I don't know why the whole crashing thing seems like a great idea. No, no, it doesn't. I look. In honesty, I didn't know you were here. I just thought, um, you know. I'll just grab the chicken poster and, you know... You came two, here... Two of these, maybe. Just for old time's sake. You just, came just, here, crashed the thing to get your chicken poster. But this, yes. dude, you still work here. It's just I thought we were in the agreement that you didn't want to do the podcast anymore. Well, uh, look, I... I yeah, uh, hang on, hang on. Come on, get him. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, Wait, let, me, let, me, let me just turn, turn, turn that on. Oh, oh, God. Oh, God. <sighs> All right, it should be on now. Look, that's look, what, what that's happened? What, that's what I just, just explain. All right, do you want me to go about what happened last week? Or what? Yes, you should do that. Yes, you should definitely do. That. Well, I don't know. We got a lot of feedback saying that Miss Love shouldn't be on the podcast, yeah. and we were just talking about it and saying that that's uh, not good. And then Miss Love said that he didn't want to do the podcast anymore anyway because it'd give him more opportunities to, do, I don't know what he does, play around with guitar pedals and watch maths. And yeah, so, yeah, that's right. uh, but, but I don't know, we just Design? thought it, you're yeah, just making it a lot harder than it has to be because no, no, yeah, <laughs> there was a big yeah, yeah. revolt and everybody wanted you back on and then we realised that there was a lot of people, but dude... Like you actually have put Ali in a bad situation. Do you understand why, that? Why? 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 I was why, I was why? always against you going. Yeah. But now that this, you're you you're, were you're, gone, you got papers now. This is also clean now. Well, look the people that shit. were against so uh, uh, for you leaving were saying that that is the exact reason why you should be leaving. What's that? Why is because that? Because you have the attention span of a hummingbird. Right. 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 Just right, right. Uh, oh, papers, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, am I? Well, look. <laughs> all I'm look. The only I, I was ready to go. I think the only thing that the only thing that I thought drew me back was uh, I mean I have to I, I I had to I have to represent the small contingency of uh, I mean look. Do the words silent Australia mean anything to you guys? Yeah, it does. A, a silent Australian. I've got to say, somebody in the comments wrote. Because and it's very true, I've got to say. They were saying that because we had the assumption that everyone hated Miss Love. Well, uh, and that was just because of the vocal minority, as always. But as somebody pointed out, wow, look at how many people want Miss Love back. He truly is the voice of the silent majority. Yeah. 380 viewers don't know how many people do want, to, do want me back. But, you know, that's okay. <laughs> We'll take that. But what, what, what's but what's the problem? What, what, well, like, look, like, Lou, we've, we've spoken about this in private, but I was never on board for you leaving. I wanted you to be here. But now that you were gone... I had to follow the rock things, star things, career. Miss, like, I made some financial decisions thinking that you're not going to be on the pod. Well, well, what, what do you mean? Well, like, what other? Like what? Tell I'd me, tell me, tell me. talk about it on the fucking pod, but well, like... Look, you you this agree is why we're that here. you're this not why we're here. This is what the, this is what the pod's for. This is our air, but air live the, right uh, now. You okay, you sabotage okay. this. Okay. Well, I, look. because you found a few people that like you. Okay. Okay. Well, that want you back. So you think you can? We had a proper discussion. I look. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, um, peace treaty, eh? So what do you what do you what do you want to do now? Huh? Well, look. Wait. So I I okay. Look, I'll be honest with you too. We, you know, you said you have a you have a uh, monetary investment. Yeah. I need Splendor in the gl the grass tickets. Yeah. We can't dude, all fucking. Dude. Okay, well, but miss, 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 no, miss, no, miss, no. miss, we, miss well, this actually. Yes, like you you do realize he's kind of fucked if well, you come uh, back. Like he's he's not actually this. He's not actually joking about this. We'll he did just get like a car loan. And I don't know how he's actually going to afford that. Is it an electric car? Yes. Hybrid. But why does that matter? The point... I think... Uh, look, if, if you... It, I completely understand that you want... Do you want... We... I never wanted you off the pod. But you said that you were going to go. You well, made that decision yourself. Look, I thought COVID would have ended. And, you know, I could start a subsidiary of this in, you know... 
It's all about new beginnings, like Brazil, or you know. Are you drunk? Canada. No, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not drunk. I'm a Why are you naked? Can you explain that first of all? Well, look, I didn't realize I didn't have. You know, that's not relevant. The, the thing that's important here is. Uh, well, how, how's the boat? How's the pod going? How how, how is it? <laughs> huh? You're rocking some merch. You got some oh, new merch. Dude, I'm so conflicted because like you're rocking some new merch there. No, it's old. No, miss. that's it's new. It's just you don't pay attention to the place you work in. No, 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 no. That's look, new. That, that that's was new the merch. magic of it, but I just I feel bad for Ali. I've got to say because you do like you should be taking this seriously. He he's not in a good pre- his predicament is bad if you're in the podcast. Right, right, because right. Because. I don't know. I thought we were in this agreement, right? That you would just be continuing to be cutting through the chaff of maths and then we'd watch that and then that was the way that you were going to make your income. Well, look. And then we were going to up our Lee's income from this podcast and we thought that it would just play out well. And yeah, okay. I understand that people want you back. I don't know if they... They do. They definitely do. They do. My mum said... Did she? She said... uh, Well, no, actually she said... Glad you quit that dog shit. But she meant... Really? (laughs) So she doesn't like you being on it? I don't know. I don't know. She was probably watching SBS. Because I just thought that, like, you know, it might give you more opportunities to pursue your musical endeavours. And it's... Well, look, I might... I'm just saying it's, like, difficult if you're going to be here. I might have been drunk. I might have been drunk then. I don't... I don't Well, that's very obvious. That's that's, that's one thing that we're all sure of. Yeah. Are we? (laughs) Yeah, well, I am. What I'm sure of. <laughs> uh, even for you, this is a very sloppy behavior, I have to say. What I'm sure of is that I'm not getting any income from maths or from any other shit. Mm. And you seem to be crashing in places because you found a little bit of popularity. Like, look, you, got you were always. Whatever. He does have Takia, that's true. <laughs> I don't know. Look, miss. Look, all I'm saying is in the future, you can't do this. You can't can, just quit the pod no, no, no. Well, and then decide to come back. I I don't know what... What does that mean, though? What do you mean? What were you? I'm saying that if you're going to make a decision in life, right? You're reading so keep, many self-help I can keep, books I can, now. Do you want me to go? I can so many go. Books you do you want me to leave? Well, this is what I want to know. I want to know, are you staying or not? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm very... I'm, I'm confused. I'm. You came in here... When we Have agreed, okay, thinking? I'm just going to not... By the way, I'm, you I'm going to leave. We thought now. that you went home. He brought that tea from me. You just fucking took it without asking. Well, look, it's just, just... What's the fucking point with that? Just think Do you want it, one, Ali? Think of it as a metaphor what? for the car. Do you want one? It's gone now. No, I'm okay. Just I'm, think I'm of okay. it as a metaphor. You know what I mean? It's like a metaphor well, for right, the All right, car. fine. It's fun. Very fun. I, I, dude, I've got to say, it's pretty county. Yeah, well, look, maybe I should go. Maybe I'll go. Yeah, I'll go. I, I'll go. No, 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 it's fine. I'll go. I don't I mind. Can. Listen, I don't mind if you stay. I don't mind if you go. We can figure this out no, 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 later. No, no, but it's just, if you're going to do this in I the future. I I I Is there still whiskey? We still got whiskey here? Yeah, but you're not having it. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I think I want some. This is, I want some. <laughs> I'm having some. It's my fucking... What are these cunts say? Such a mooch. Out of the commies. Uh, forget these two This is commies. like when Kramer went to LA and then just came back as if... <laughs> Maybe I should... Uh, Start my own pod, Secede. Is that a better idea? Yeah, there's Maybe nothing wrong that. with that. Should I do that? Start with not crashing other people. Why do you? Why are you both in the chat? Uh, yeah, look, everybody's really confused. I think everybody's as confused as Make some I am. Future appearances. Stick to your decision to leave. Okay. But then some say free. Give him. Does free mean go or stay? I don't understand. Do you really want to... It's not about them, though, miss. Like, you need to understand this, but you also need to understand that you can't just change your decisions. You you have to... uh, You you can't... You have to, uh, you know... You you haven't read enough of uh, Old Mate. What's his name? The guy. Fuck. He's fucking drunk. Old Mate. You know... You know... uh, The self help guru. All right, miss, miss. You're you're not... Look. You know know what this is really about? It's because I pissed in the fish tank, isn't it? You pissed in the fish tank? Are you tank? talking about the shower? No, no, I'm talking about the fish tank because I pissed in the fish tank. That That's... I don't know if you're trying to piss me off or not. I, did you do that? I'm not going to... I'm not going to... Look, we're not going to talk about fish tanks or union donations or anything controversial. 
from this side. Okay, what look, Miss, how about for this podcast you go, okay, okay. but you can decide sure. in another podcast if you want to come back. But you can't just keep chopping and changing because you've you've actually really fucked Ali. I so mean, look, I, I, from I, I now on, if you're going to commit to something, you have to commit to it. Commit, yeah. Define commit. What is English dictionary? Well, I'm leave. quitting and then come back. Right. Well, uh, we made yeah. it a thing about, I guess, uh, they don't even know you fucked off randomly because you couldn't handle a couple of comments. Is that, what were the comments? Were they saying, I saw good comments. Yeah. Look, there is, I, I will say this, there is a comments. lot of good comments. There's a yeah. lot of people that love you and you should be happy about that. That's it. Oh, was it bad? bad? I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't understand, but I think, uh, mm. look, next time you guys have to tell me more directly because you can't be mess. You can't be messaging me from other people and just being like you, you're you're off. I can't be. It's too vague. We didn't message. We didn't ask anyone Who's, to tell you that. Guys, tell the truth. Come on. I don't know. That's Maybe not, I don't know the truth because I was under the impression that you decided to fuck off randomly. Just uh, just don't That's get right, randoms no, he wasn't, to message. He wasn't there don't for get that, randoms so. to message me. It's sneaky. Very sneaky. What um, randoms? Look, I got mess. I got. I, I didn't hear anything. You got a lot. You get a lot of messages as well. Uh, I, I don't, don't really know where to go ex- from this. Union, I don't want messages from ex-union people. Hey, what are you trying maybe, to do? Maybe maybe we'll just maybe we'll just continue this on the private pod. We can just keep. <laughs> but you're just going around in circles because you're hammered. Okay. So, <laughs> like, and that's hilarious. I think you're getting hammered. Okay, look. How about how about we fucking finish this pod? Because <laughs> you, you guys well, finish. Well, look, no, yeah. we've got how much longer have we got to go? We've got, we've got time. So we've got an audience. And look, they came here for the pod. So let's fucking do it. He can stay here like he's been doing for the last five years before he decided to fuck off randomly. Union thugs. Let's just do it. This isn't the first time he's Union been drunk thugs. on the pod. So I think we're okay. Yeah, it's rich come from you two. Nah, look. Look. Miss, you're a champ. I true, truly, truly do believe that. And I've got to say, I did put you in like a bad predicament by just being like, "Look, the, the audience, <laughs> the audience doesn't like you." And it turned out they the did. Fun. And it turned out we they don't, did. But that's the that's the uh, that's part of the fun, right? That's part of the fun. You know, you don't have to love. They don't have to. They don't have to uh, concede, do they? The audience. Hmm? They don't have to love us, or do? They, or should they love us? Dude, they're Who here. They're, they're here for a political podcast. They're not here okay. to love us. They're not in a relationship with us. So can we move on? Um, one of the things I'll, I wanted to talk uh, about damn, that was, was heavy. One of the things this that I wanted awkward. to talk about was <sighs> this is awkward. That there's a um, there's two different opinions uh, in terms of COVID recovery. So the uh, Reserve Bank of Australia has a different opinion to the government. And I wanted to discuss that. Yeah. The Reserve Bank of Australia says that um, Australia is nowhere out of this uh, recession, uh-huh. and they're predicting. They're keeping the interest rates virtually to zero uh-huh. for the next three years. Yeah. Whereas the government, on the other hand, has decided to end JobKeeper, has decided to end most of the subsidies, and they're saying that the economy is recovering now, so we're back on like easy streak. Um. So I wanted to think. I wanted. Poop. To, I wanted to <laughs> ask you. One sec. Um. What do you think about this conflict? Ah. Uh. Too awkward. So many things to say. So many Can't things. Can't handle it. Are you going home? No, 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 no. I just, uh, I'm just checking something. I'm just checking the fridge, all right? There's no whiskey there. All right, all right. Let's just pause it again and we'll... Look, we'll, we'll have to come we'll, we'll back. We'll come back. We'll ad. just reframe. So we'll, we'll just have it. I'm we'll just do an ad break. Right. And we're back. Uh, yeah, let's talk about COVID. So what's going on? The Reserve Bank. Um, the Reserve Bank has a completely different policy towards the economic recovery than um, than than the government does. Ooh, independent. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Go on, go on, go on. It's all good, it's all good. I don't know... Go on, I, go on, just, just, just continue. It's fine, like... Oh, dude, what? I'm just checking your shit. No, 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 it's all good, it's all good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Come on. Yeah, yeah, I'm just checking. I'm just checking. No, no, please, well, just go home. We'll talk about it tomorrow. No, 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 it's all good. It's all good. So, hey, talk, talk for me. All right. Hey, I'm hey, gonna hey, hey, hold on, hold on. It's all good. Just, just, hey, hey. just, just fuck me. Maybe just cut it for a second. Maths loving. Hey, fuck up. Miss, what the fuck? A psycho. 
What the hell? Wait, wait, get off! Get the fuck off! Fucking die! Look, I'm sorry. Look, I'm sorry. We have to. We have to go. Well, that was obviously all staged. <laughs> and scene. I think. How did people believe? That? Okay, a lot of people were saying, "Yeah, it's clearly a prank." But like the fact that anyone was being like, "Is this real? Is this real?" I mean, look, okay, I know how maths works. I think it's real too. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Jeez. But we and just it was bordering on real. I was like, I was believing it. I'm like, is this real? There was moments where I was like, "You're a dick, Miss yeah. Love. You shouldn't have done that to Ali." <laughs> Hey, got it, dude. That's how soap opera and works. I bought a car. Yeah. Do you really think this podcast can make me afford a car? <laughs> <laughs> An electric car? An electric car. I was like, what, 50 Miss, grand minimum? That's what we're on. Mention it a little bit over here. Still <laughs> uh, not big up. I got to say, Miss. Genius improvisation skills. Yeah, yeah. If, if, if it's a fight, I'm good. No, 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 no. no. Uh, well, the fight, I think uh, we really could have done with two's acting classes she oh. just did on stage <laughs> fights. Oh, yeah, true. But true. I think that before that, when you were just uh, pretending to be drunk, I, I was getting it. And Ali yeah, right. looked genuinely pissed. You, were, you should get a BAFTA. Dude, yeah. Ali I, was the real stealer of that I show. used to be an actor back in the day. Bullshit. That's how Jordan and I met. Oh, you actually did theater. He was my director. What? Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, that is how we met. Okay, that's wild. Yeah. But well, yeah, uh, just to address everybody. <laughs> I don't know how this happened. Everyone's on to it. They're, they're, no one knew. No one knew. What? No, no way. One no no one way. One knew. Yep, Ali sold it. Nah, dude, most of them, most of them didn't know. Whew, Christ, that was uh, Ali did amazing. Yeah, yeah. What the he hell? so did. He, 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 Ali was phenomenal. <laughs> Miss Love isn't going. Here's the other thing. This is what you Ali need to know. Ali made Miss Love look like a real but dick. This, yeah. is, this is what the audience also needs to know. I was believing if you, 95% Ali. Ninety-five percent of you say Miss Love needs to go. He still stays because. Weirdly, we do this podcast for us. It's so good. All your haters out there, Miss Love isn't going anywhere. I'm not going yeah, anywhere. Yeah. No one's going nowhere. Like, Either let, the podcast be, goes or we all stay yeah, right here. Yeah, I think this is... Uh, we, 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 we're basically like, you know, the fucking three musketeers at this point. It's like we either like... You know, all for one and one for all. Well, you know, if, if one goes down, then like we don't look as handsome with our little moustaches and we can't fight off the Spanish. I just don't Well, that was the same reason that they had the phrase all for one and one for all, the moustaches. And <laughs> <laughs> I think like. Uh, I really liked. Uh, but no, that was. That was that but was do you want to tell amazing. them why you weren't here last week? <laughs> we never told them. Uh, oh, look, I, w I will say, like, yeah. He's genuinely pissed off the reason why he wasn't here last week, but I do oh. understand why. <laughs> were you? No, no but it's just like, look. We're very proud of as you. As Miss yeah. says, we're proud of you for doing it, yeah. but as Put Miss says, you, and it's just such a, uh, it's it, what pissed me off about it, I guess, is just it's so indicative of this man's nature. <laughs> he said yes. to us, boys, like, think about this. As an employer, you have to sympathise with how annoying this is. <laughs> I'm taking half a week off. Why? Because I need to play drums. <laughs> I just need to. <laughs> and I support it. Okay, so you want full pay for that week as well? Yep, full pay. Right, all right. You go play drums. Well, that's something that I would have... Uh, <laughs> I, 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 was, I was keen to address after, but, you know, I did some work from home. Fuck yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, your work is watching TV. Yes, yeah. well, you, you did watch TV. What yeah. you did today was tell me that I am going to Canberra with Jordan. Well, that is <laughs> also play more drums. Yeah. <laughs> Which, by the way, yes, shout out. Yes, it's true. Hey, it's my calling. I can't, I can't <laughs> fuck around with these two clowns all fucking t all the time. You know. Yeah. Let's be perfectly clear about this yourself. Drums are not your calling. No, 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 they're not. <laughs> but, no, no, you misunderstood. <laughs> I don't play the drums. I sit in the corner and go. Hmm. Little bit more mids, 
No, no, it was better without the mids. Better without the mids. So when's your album coming and out? That is your calling. That is my calling. Uh, Do you want to plug yeah. your actual? No, nah, it's not. It's not done. Not it's coming not coming out done. It's, Look, if it, yeah, it, it, it's it's a long, unromantic process. Like all that bullshit about the fucking the English the English people or whatever. Like some like English rock star that's on like behind the music, and he's like, yeah, we walked in. Uh, Larry fucking picked up the old six string, strummed out the first chords to Brown Sugar, and EMI, uh, the guy from EMI said, that is a hit song. Next minute we're all buying Golden Castles. It's a little bit different in 2021 <laughs> in Australia. Hey, right. keep going. I want to know. Cl- What's the difference? Uh, are out of this, uh, They've downgraded silver. from gold to silver. That's right, yep. silver houses. Right, okay. And, and yep. it, it's just fucking That's where bullshit. Silver Chair got the name. That's <laughs> history being made right here, correct. But uh, so that, that, that you know, is that that doesn't help. That does my head in. This is, silver's not gold. It's like I'm always second place. But... Uh, but look, you should fucking win a BAFTA, dude. That was crazy. Both of you. I was Yeah, I was, there was moments where Ali was I couldn't was, actually tell if he was genuinely pissed off or not. And so it started <laughs> making Well, I, that is incredible. I started I started it. Yeah. I started, I started thinking they're just being like yeah, fuck you. Fuck, dude. Like getting a car's a big this poor yeah. guy. <laughs> I started to invent lies. I was just like you, I think something about a union you run work. fish tank. Yeah, and, and then you, and you're like, I pissed in that fish tank. That <laughs> and that, that pissed that you off. So good. Yeah, even, even the even thought. The, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> even the thought, and you were livid. Like you couldn't, you couldn't, you and couldn't. In have my head, it. I was thinking, oh, that's going too far, dude. Don't do that. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good to know if I ever take like any time off or anything. Like I'm sick, my fa- family member dies, my legs get smashed in a trucking accident. I'm getting, <laughs> I have to live, I have to become an actor, one, a good actor, and two, I have to like live out a false reality of me being a cunt. Is that how it goes on the, this pod? I didn't know that. I didn't Did know I that. I think that we could do wait, that can again. We, can oh, we get yeah, an true. audience reaction on this? While, while, we, were, <laughs> really while we were doing this, did you think Miss Love is the cunt? Because I swear, I you're did. the one that got, had to leave the job. No one was thinking that you're a cunt. People were thinking I'm a cunt. Who, for someone, like, think of it from my perspective. It took me one day to buy a car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> that is that cunty. Is stupid and No, insane. I think everybody was just like, how could you do this to give me, Ali this fi- heavy <laughs> burden of a financial investment of getting a luxury car <laughs> in the shortest amount of time humanly possible? And they were but on I your don't... side. They were no, actually... They but were, but no, the thing is, nobody was side. thinking about that extra step, which is that, like, oh, he's gone sick. No one was thinking yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Right. And also but like, if you think about it, Ali is a massive cunt. <laughs> 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 also no, that's so that means that like yeah. buys remorse, dude. Yeah, 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 not yeah, only yeah. that, like yeah. one of my best like friends college. do. <laughs> <laughs> Snooze you lose. So anyway, we should probably get going. Uh, we probably uh, should get going, but before we go, uh, I do have one additional tidbit to add to this momentous <sighs> podcast, which is you guys did. Really I'll be well. touring a lot. Get your tickets, but. Somebody, as a meme... No, actually, this is how it went down. In the Common Sense Brigade, there was a thread someone showed me where somebody put up a hilarious meme about Miss Love leaving the pod. I think it was <laughs> Poochie from The Simpsons. <laughs> yeah, there was just saying, really Miss Love leaving the pod. I have to go now. <laughs> and this, and this, and this. Um, hey, and whenever Miss Love's not there, everyone should ask, hey... Where's Miss Love? <laughs> <laughs> which, is what happened, which is what happened. My favorite I, thing was I, free, I, free Miss Love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. There seemed to be like I. It's not. Hey, I got. It say, generated a lot of memes. Yeah. I have to say, it, it, you guys know how to make a guy feel loved, because uh, you know, apart from like one in, I don't know what it was, but uh, the occasional person being like, yeah, he, every time they're talking about like oil reserves being siphoned, siphoned from Yemen to East Yemen, he always name drops some random band, and I'm like. He's not, they're not wrong. But everybody that was supporting <laughs> we you, love it. everyone that was supporting you was just saying like, what? How's a podcast going to be the same when they're talking about oil reserves in Yemen and he's not dropping an obsequious band? Yeah. <laughs> and I agree with that guy. We need that. There's we're, no way we're, 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 that no. shit's replaceable. Yeah, yeah, like, it's just, we've, all, we've all got our uh, unique you know, strengths and weaknesses, but uh, irrelevant of that, it, it was very nice to, to see the slew of strangers you know who i assume are like exclusively from perth 
Maybe Adelaide, some from Adelaide that were yeah, that, that, that yeah. were pro out of Miss. suburbs of Melbourne, which it's is pretty much Perth. No, but dude, there yeah. were so many people pro you. We lost, we fucking lost patrons because of the stupid thing. <laughs> Jesus, I wrote the what? exit survey. They're a like, two minute gap. Well, one, we lost one. <laughs> what? Hey, still, that's, still, you gotta that's respect commitment. That's commitment. Please, back. You gotta please <laughs> come back, that guy. Can, can you come back though? Yeah, no, yeah, you can, yeah please you come, back. come back. We we, we love you. Uh, and no one, you know, I suppose we unless look until like. Potentially, everyone forgets about this, and it's long enough, and we'll just do it again to one of you, <laughs> one of you two, or or whoever, or me two. again. Come uh, and, and, and you know, unless that happens, probably can't do this again. So, like, you know, it was fine. But what we can do? How's this? I want to get a poll before we finish this. That meme in the thread. Everybody was saying, "Oh my god, it's just not going to be the same without Mislov." I'm so sad. Yes, have to back that up. So nice that people were saying so that, nice. but oh, I know. <laughs> there then, is there is a better alternative. Then, then, in the comments, people were saying, "Who's going to replace him?" Marcus Paul <laughs> is a member of the Common Sense <laughs> Brigade. I didn't know. <laughs> and he writes in the comments, <laughs> "Happy to take the spot." <laughs> Oh, so funny. How good is this? Just, I'll fill it in. Hashtag Marcus Paul. Hashtag the prawn in the morning. Like, dude. I, that was chill. Like, and he you, knows how to get promo. And I have a beef with a few people who say in the comments, why'd you get rid of Mislov? You got rid of the wrong guy. Get rid of oh, Ali. Oh, hey, dude, oh, fuck you guys. Dude. Stop pitting him against each other. Everyone say that. That's, that's, and that is what's happening. I was reading the uh, fucking just when that that peak was going down, and I was like, "Fuck, is, it's all over. This is all over." I've, I, this is the, I just had a nightmare the other night that just seemed real, in, like you know, an actual dream that I thought was real for like two minutes after I woke up. I'm like, "It's happening again. Is this reality or is this a dream?" And like the same thing was happening. Everyone was just like, "Fuck." Why the fuck did you stop him getting his electric car, you cunt? <laughs> oh, shit. Sorry, I don't know. Yeah, if you you're allowed to say that. And, uh, and then the same and vice versa. So, yeah, like, guys, uh, like, look. I think I'm a few years away from any kind of electric car. Dude, so I think. I, 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 with or without <laughs> missing. But with your Patreon donations, we can make that yes. possible. And, and you know what's yeah. going to help, too? Please Buy continue. these shirts. Yeah, Lang yeah. Gang. Bras. Uh, bras. And these shirts. On FriendlyGeordies.com. <laughs> and, and of course, classic Friendly Geordies right there. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, like. Yeah, I'm glad we put off, but like, seriously, we don't care about what people say on the internet. <laughs> Is that yeah, just yeah, we, we, no, we, we, you care. Come we, on. We, we, you had a nice little smile at all of the comments of people saying, bring back. That was song. nice. But I mean, the idea that I think there was a couple of people that clue and it was like three fucking specs had a go at, you know, miss love and they cancel him. Oh, I smell bullshit. It's like, yeah, like. Oh, you're working class. We work we representing the fucking working nah, class. Dude, like, We're not going to get fucking cancelled by some but random. You, nah, but you know what? For I nothing. would. It, it makes sense because people get cancelled for stupid shit. Piers Morgan had to leave Good Morning Britain because I don't uh, know. He said that Meghan Markle was kind of annoying, so he had to quit. So people. Well, let's not let's not uh, <laughs> make this the. No, that's fair though. It's like there well, is I don't know a, exactly what was the reason, but whatever yeah. reason it was, I don't think it was. Enough it was pretty for much verbatim to, what you said. It was pretty stupid, but anyway. So, but it makes sense that people would assume that right, right, that we're right. like morons, and just because a few people shared, now nah, cancel Miss Love, we're gonna get rid of you. Yeah, it is the atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you might be right. What I'll say though is, guys, stop pitting them against each other. <laughs> Ali and Miss Love are both irreplaceable. Clearly, the replaceable one is me. <laughs> and the next time that I'm doing stand up, <laughs> I'm proving it. This is your invite, Marcus. If you want to sit in this chair, next time that I'm out, prove yourself. Come on here, see if that you can hold court. Because I honestly think you, there really isn't that much difference between me and Marcus Paul. The only difference is 20 years. Yeah, he's your dad. <laughs> yeah, you're That's not the wrong. Only difference. He's just slightly more tan. But no, we're not getting rid of anyone. And Marcus, you're a great man, but we're not doing this podcast. No, no I, we are doing I, if, if, if as a I, like I Because I will need to tour soon. Oh, for long I just as like a COVID feeling. was a dry year for me. It oh, would okay. be. You know, as, as I a got a tour. Yeah. So uh, as a guest host, for sure. Yeah, yeah he's got a guest host. host. When, when Jordan's gone, just get, you know, 
Jordan's dad, aka the porn. It would be uh, there would be no difference. We just sit there. There wouldn't be a difference. Be, there would be no yeah, difference. There's a temporary thing. I'm all down. He just he's probably more pro labor. So just yeah. be like, hey, in fact, hey, hey, duped all you guys for the last two weeks. I've been hosting two SM breakfast. <laughs> no one knew. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, awesome. And before that, I was hosting 2GB Breakfast with Ben Fordham. Yeah. All right. Real hero. You're the Grant Denny of 2021. Yeah. Doing everything. But um, Jordan uh, Jordan will be touring tomorrow, uh, which is starting the 17th of March in Canberra. I will be with him because Miss Love has to record Play some drums. more drums. Play more drums, baby. Some of us have to actually work, not then, fap about. <laughs> let's be honest, Miss Love. Like, cosmically, you really should be fired. <laughs> Fuck off A long time ago Cosmically this, you should be fine I'm not gonna do my job Two weeks in a row Cosmically I should replace you And you should be A warfy in In Frio That's what should really happen uh, Yeah You tried I do out all that the, I, do all, I do all your maths Fucking I should be reading maths That I do all the fucking research that's true, actually. Yeah, you so fuck, that's and it is research. It's a tough gig. Yeah, it Anyways, is. it is. Thank you guys for joining you us. You should see how glazed his face looks. It's like when Homer is getting yeah. all the donuts in the world. That's Miss Love's face when he's watching maths. Bryce. Uh, I can't listen to that man anymore. You can pass your fly. I don't you know how Canberra liar. listened to him in the first place. You that you was insane. Yeah, you it's guys, insane. energy levels are high. We're over time. We need to go to the and do the up late. We're going to the up late. Was it really staged? Find out there. <laughs> Join on Patreon. <laughs>